Congratulations. I want to say good afternoon, and we want to welcome everyone to our March 24th, 2020 board work session, um, business meeting. I now call for a moment of silence. Thank you. A quorum has been established, and I call to order again the March 24, 2020 board work session business meeting. I now call for a motion to approve the March 24, 2020 board work session agenda. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the agenda, amend the agenda for March 24, 2020. Second. Motion has been made and properly second that we approve the board session. Can you vote, please? Layman's name was in red. I was just because she has a vote. Oh, okay. Thank you. She's having difficulties. All right. Uh, call for public comment. Mr. Connor, could you check to see if we have any public comments? No one here physically. Okay. These were two that came in from the online form. Okay. No one here physically, but these are two that came in from the online. And it reads as such, it says, I don't want my child to go to the prom if school is closed. Cancel all school activities. And it just says, um, the person's name is Danielle. So what she said is she doesn't want her um, child to go to the prom if, if school Activities are closed. Do you want to take that? Dr. Young, is there any suggestion that that would take place, that the problem would go on? So just for the point of clarification, are the public comments comments or the public comments the places to now respond? The public comments are comments, and I guess we need to get with her. We can have a discussion about it because okay. typically we don't All respond right, back to clarification. I just have to. So typically we don't respond to the comments we just wait. Well, I wasn't, it, wasn't, it is a response to but my question. It was just, I'm assuming that all things are canceled. I would think so. Yeah. so I'll just, I'll return that. But we can actually kind of discuss it in another time. Yeah. The next question comes from Jen. Can you hear me? Can you speak with people who are the next question comes from Jen, and it says, "I hope I hope you all um, don't let the students back in school because I don't want my child to catch the virus. If y'all care so much about our children, children, you would not let them back until it's safe for them to come back." Thank you, Ms. Katie. This is coming from Jen. Thank you. So I believe that is all of the public comments. So 
we thank you. I now turn over the meeting to Dr. Young. So good afternoon. Um, what I'm going to do is just to provide just a brief update. This information, um, this information has been provided through the management team and the executive team. And every day we provide updates to our, um, every other day or so when needed, we provide updates to our board. And so what you have is um, online already. And what's online is basically the communication efforts that we've made to communicate with parents about the coronavirus. Our volunteers that we've received. You also have an update of the food services that we've distributed. And so as of um, this past Friday, we distributed over 7,000 meals to our students. In addition, we also have the um, some of the things that we've done in relation to finance, which means we pay our employees that would normally get paid at the end of the month. So we have employees that should have gotten paid next week on the 31st, and they were paid this past Friday. In addition, some of the other things that I've included were the um, administrator, the emergency preparedness um, information. And I've also included the DPI case manager's information and pretty much what the state has stated in reference to some guidelines that we should do within the district. And so what I've done is I've provided the board just a, a combination of all of the various things and the updates that we've provided. Um, within curriculum instruction, um, there is a mandatory teacher check-in and we're in the process of finalizing what that protocol will look like. But minimally, the teachers are in the process of preparing lesson plans for the next two to four weeks. And then they also have mandatory check-ins that they have to document of their conversations with parents and additional support that they're providing to our parents. One of the challenges that we have right now is internet access. And so one of the things that we are doing is working with Mr. Connor to see if um, more new tech and Vaughn if we could look to see if we could increase the bandwidth and look to see what we can do to allow um, parents to come on school grounds to access the internet in their vehicle. But that's something that we're looking at. But a big piece is the challenge of um, parents that don't have internet to be able to have um, internet access. Um, we've also looked at Spectrum. Spectrum basically said that they provide it if it's zoned for that area. And most of our county is not zoned for Spectrum. We've also looked at other carriers of internet providers to see what they can do. And so part of it is exhausting the resources that are there to let parents know. Some have signed up for Spectrum that have access, but the challenge is, um, which represents about 40% of our state is limited or no Wi-Fi access. And so that's not something that's just foreign to Warren County. It's something that all of the states that have rural um, um, that, that live in rural, you know, North Carolina have challenges. So the other thing that we've also talked about is looking to see if we can get some hot spots. And so once again, that's a big piece. But what we've done is we've said to our parents and to our students, we're providing electronic instruction, and we're providing hard copy instruction, and basically it's the same information. So if parents don't come and pick up the hard copy, it's the duplicate of the hard copy, which is the instruction. But the ultimate is just to make sure that our students also have instruction. In relation to human resources, we're looking to um, submit to you all today um, the telework that was recommended by DPI. I'm just going through just to make sure just the most salient points. For our student services, um, our social workers, we have students that are homeless. They're working with them daily, making sure that they have food, making sure that they have what they need. In relation to our custodial services, um, they've already cleaned all of the building. And so the goal is, is that once the buildings are clean, then look to see what are the additional things that we need to do to ensure that we maintain cleanliness in those areas where uh, the district is still um, using and having the need to continue to maintain the cleanliness. So that's one document. The other document is a document that's uploaded. 
And the document that's uploaded is basically a document that um, I reviewed, and it was a Warren County Procedure Guide. And the Warren County Procedure Guide basically provided what the coronavirus was. I can wait until Mr. Connor goes there. It's not a problem. It's in the attachment on the board agenda. Yes, sir. So what I've done is I've provided the um, procedural guide which speaks to what the coronavirus <laughs> is, the planning team that was um, the creation of the document. At that time, which was on March 14th, um, it speaks to the executive order 116 by Governor Roy Cooper. And then on the 15th, it also spoke to the update that was given from Governor Cooper. These are all the communications that Warren County has engaged or used to engage all of our stakeholders. And then these are the different types of education that we've used to inform, to ensure that we've informed our students, parents, and also our community of the things that we've done to try to make sure that they're aware of the coronavirus and things that they need to do. Um, we've also talked about social distancing and we've practiced that. Also making sure that if staff is sick, that um, they are not able to return to work until there is medical clearance is being required. In relation to human resources, this was the plan that we had used last week. And so the goal was based upon what the state has stated, this was a temporary plan. And so now we're looking to modify the plan because as now the time is extended to May 15th, we're now looking to see how we will then move forward, which the plan does state that after two weeks, we would assess where we are and then modify and make adjustments. In relation to payroll, I had stated earlier that um, people were paid. And then now the question is now coming to the board, the district is gonna have to reassess the status and modify the plans in relation to finances moving forward, which is something that I'll be presenting to you all. Childhood and nutrition, we still have three sites. We have Northside K-8, we have Vaughn Elementary, and we have Warren County High School. And from 10.30 to 3 o'clock, we're serving meals. And I will say my understanding is as of yesterday, each day it gets greater. I think yesterday we now served over 1,100 meals, breakfast and lunch. Um, so we're talking like 23, 2,400 meals were served um, yesterday. So like I said, each day, the numbers have, um, have definitely increased. For the custodials, these are some of the things that they did to ensure that deep cleaning occurred within the buildings. Transportation also, these are the strides that they did to ensure that um, when the students do return, that all of the uh, transportation uh, vehicles have been sanitized properly. Student services, once again, the goal was to make sure that any of our students, by way of medical for the nurse, and by way of homeless of our students, that we were able to continue to ensure that they have what they need. The counselors are still working and conferencing and having meetings. And so part of it is just to make sure that we continue as much as possible with staying on track, particularly our seniors. So I know comments were made. Um, in reference to our seniors, but the goal is to try to, as much as possible, maintain some level of normalcy as much as possible for our seniors minimally, because the goal is they're going to college. And so we want to make sure that academically we are able to provide all of what we need to them. And so our counselors are still working with them to make sure that applications are submitted, that scholarships are still being submitted, because we want to make sure that our students are still able to receive the funds and also be accepted into college in a timely manner because those requirements have not changed. In relation to our academic services, we offer distant learning opportunities, which is a resource for our students. And then also, we also have educational hard copy work packets. So all students have an educational hard copy work packet, but for those students that have access to the internet, these are the additional enrichment activities that we offer through our station already in USA Test Prep and North Carolina Virtual School. And my last comment was, based on the governor's comments, we may be looking up to eight weeks, and this was something that was stated um, last week. And so now the district will strategize the next steps, which we're doing now to ensure that we continue the plan that we put in place, but now just lengthening it to make sure that all of our students have what they need 
first academically and then also with the child food and nutrition and then also that our employees are also safe. Were there any questions? Have there any questions or anything? I'm trying to frame this. Talk a little loud. Um, my concern is with the academic services, but is the work being graded? I, I, I'm seeing and hearing a lot of concern on the part of the parents that their children aren't getting the work that they need or they don't have access to the internet. It's creating frustration and it's kind of um, exacerbating the bad situation in, in terms of the pandemic gets worse. So, are is this work being returned to teachers that are being graded, or how how is this working so we can kind of utilize some of the fears and parents that their children are staying, you know, abreast of the expectation? Because many of the parents that don't have the distance learning are also the ones that can't drive in and get the packets. So what we've done is we've said to parents, we need you to let us know what you need. Okay. So far, I've only got one email from a parent saying that they had an issue as it relates to accessing technology. I actually, on my communication, gave them my email address. And I said, if you have any concerns, call me, email me. One parent has emailed me and the parent said that their um, iPad was broken and their concern was they wanted to see was the school open to giving them an iPad, but they had the instructional packet. So what we said to parents was in the schedule, we provided them with time that they could come and they could pick up the instructional packets. In addition to that, all of those instructional packets that parents did not pick up, we still have them in the central offices. So the principals and the teachers they pretty much, the schools call the parents and they said, we still have your educational packet. Um, it's at central office. Um, you know, we have it for you to provide to you. Um, there's some that have come by and they picked it up. Some have not come by and picked it up, nor have they called. And so for me, you know, one of the things that we even talked about is mailing the packet to the parent, but because some of our students are very transient, Many times when you mail things home, it gets returned back. And so the question became, how much money are we willing to spend to send out educational packets when some of the addresses aren't correct? So that's why we've really been pushing to parents saying, please come pick up these packets. And so the packets weren't just there when the teachers were there last week. They're still available. And we've said to them, they're still available. And then for those that are not able to pick up the packets, we have information online that they can still continue. So I do understand the concern, but a part of it is for me, with all that's going on, we just need our parents to be partners in this. There's some things we're just not going to be able to. Have we, have we communicated to the parents or to the community for child students? Um, you know, have we communicated and said the packets have now transferred from the school because the schools are closed down to the central office? Yes. And, the, and everybody knows that. Yes, and the packets are at are central accessible, accessible for them that they can be picked up. And so a part of it is saying we've communicated that to the parents. And so for parents that have, even after last week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, did not pick them up, you know, and, and here I go, we're distributing 1,100 meals a day. And so at the same time, when those parents come to the high school, they could come over to the central office or they could have gotten it. You know, now do we have a lot of packets? No, I will say out of the seven schools, my understanding is we have one school that we received a lot of packets back and that was this middle school. But other than this middle school, all of the other, for the most part, most of the packets were picked up by all of the students. It was the middle school that had the greatest number. And a part of it is the middle school principal, Ms. Neal, has made sure that she has teachers following up with the parents. But once again, even to the point of saying Google Classroom, which we have, the challenge is for those that don't have internet access, they're not going to be able to access the work that they didn't pick up. And that's the challenge for, you know, where we are right now. So my question also includes like the return of this work. So the, the work goes out and I haven't seen the packet, so I don't know in front of the students. Can you just help us understand? Are they do it. Is there an, an the intention that they return it for it to be reviewed? So right now what's the process? So yeah. right now our goal is that they teach the packets. Our goal yeah. right now is because we don't have a process where um, and that's no school district in the United States has a process where students are doing the work and sending it back because no one is at the school to 
collected. The only thing we're trying to make sure is that we ensure that we get the work to students, and then on the back end, we can talk about that process and what it looks like to get the work integrated, because even DPI hasn't even worked it out. DPI is trying to figure out if they're going to lower the number of credits for students to graduate as teachers this year. They haven't worked that out yet. DPI is trying to figure out how we can ensure that all of our students have internet access. They haven't worked that out. So even so it's one of those things where it's a build the plane as we go. But minimally, we wanted to make sure that all of our students had instructional work. Now I'm not going to ask parents to mail it in because one, they have to go to the mailbox. Two, there's not going to be anyone at the school to collect it. And so the biggest thing is getting it to the students and then trying to figure out a process for ensuring that grades go in. <laughs> but my understanding is DPI has also said that they may look at only um, first, second, and third quarter, 75% of the year. And if you pass 75% of the year, then you pass for the year. But once again, those are all speculations that DPI is saying. But for me, it's just making sure that all students have work. All those other things, it has not been finalized. And it won't be finalized right now because DPI is, there are a lot of different messages that are being sent right now. Thank you. That answers the question. I think that clarifies it for some of you might have to yes. But when DPI, and I'll give you, they have waivers. And so already they waived the testing and accountability waiver for the schools. And so we know that we will not be held accountable for our assessments this year. And so as they come along with their waivers, then we'll know, but minimally, we want to make sure that if they come back and say work has to be graded, we at least have work that we can say we can give. I'd rather give the students work and have them bring it in and we figure out a process to grade it than them not do anything. And so for me, it's making sure that those students that don't have work are able to get work. And that's, you know, like I said, where we just need to, you know, like I said, the school that had the most packets that was not distributed was the middle school. And so part of it is then what can we do to support to make sure parents have it? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I guess because we do have the issue with the middle school having the most packets that are not being sent out, could we could we possibly send those to the young parents? No, we can send those to the parents, but the challenge is is that we can send them out, but not all the time. But because many of our students are very transient, many of what we've sent out comes back to us. And so the addresses are not correct. So if you were to say we've done due diligence and done everything we can do, we can send it out. It's just when you talk about these packets that are like, you know, three, four dollars, because they're pretty, you know, you're talking about maybe 40 worksheets. And so, you know, by the time we weigh them, pack them, send them out what we can do. Or if we we are already sending, I think you guys have passed out a lot of meals to the houses already. Yeah, I think, but it was about 50 parents that we passed out meals. That's that many. Yeah, everyone else just picked it up. Picked them up, right. But I think you guys have been doing a good job with that. I mean, is it possible that we could possibly just check by the house to ensure that the key gets a packet? I don't know. We might get do it, but we not have the So part of it is just looking to see what our resources are and then looking to see what we can do. because. For me, my challenge is, is whatever we start, they're going to yeah. set. And so I just, so I don't have a problem mailing it, but if we spend four hours to mail 200 students and 100 of them come back, that's 100 that got it, but then that's 100 times four that we raised the money on. So the issue is we just want to make sure that our parents, and like I said, the teachers are calling the parents. And so a part of it is the same. Do you have, even yesterday, I received a message, and my message was, do you have access to Google for ELA and math? As a parent, that's what I received. And so I know parents are getting that communication, and so what I'm hoping is, is that for those parents that don't have it, that they will say, let me figure out a way to at least call the school or figure out a way, because I go back to it's a partnership. Um, the onus has to be on the parents to a certain degree because this is this is something that's different and new for all of us. And so if we put the package together, we set time, we we called you and said, can you do this? We inform you. If you have a problem, let us know. You know, but if if that if we're not getting a response from that, then it's one of those pieces where right. Okay. Right. Is there a way? Because everybody's getting a meal. Uh, they're picking them up at the. So I won't say everyone is getting a meal. Everyone gets a meal. Okay. Once a meal. Okay. 
have yeah. access. You want somebody else who's picking you up at the high school? Yes, I am. And the middle school seems to be an issue to be getting their packets. Those are not that well, big. No, I mean, we, it's not like it's the whole middle right. school, but where we had the most packets returned was the middle school. Okay, so my question is because is there anything in, well, apparently maybe there's not anything in place at this particular time in terms of the packet and if the person is going to, is, is actually picking up the meal from the high school, is there any way that we can identify that parent and they can get, also get the packet? Yeah, I think that's what I was just saying. I don't have a problem doing that. Right now we just said we would send it to Central Office because you can still get lunch and pick up a packet. That's an idea that we can do that. For me, it's just a matter of saying, what are those opportunities that we can get instructional packets into the hands of our students? And if that's one more way, we just need to make sure that they don't come to Central anymore. They know, come to the middle and into the high. And that's not a problem. We can do that. But my biggest thing is accessibility to all of our students. And right now, um, like an hour back, to those parents who we said were needing meals, 50 parents said we didn't have transportation and needed meals. So not trying to minimize it, that means that there weren't anyone else calling. And so really, we should have a board of 50 parents that had, had that didn't have an educational package. Right. And I'll say that in a nice and right. way. I hear you. Absolutely. So I think I think we're doing it. I think, you know, I agree with what you're saying as far as some accountability has to be put back on the parents and say, well, if you know, we have these packets accessible to you, this these are the places. But we can, and I think that's what I would say, it's kind of similar to what you were saying. When they come get the meal, could they possibly be there to do it? And she said she could possibly. So, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. we'll make that as the next step that we'll transfer yeah. the packet over to the middle to meet to the high school. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? And like I said, information <laughs> comes in, as you all as board members have seen, information yeah. comes in every two, every three hours yeah. you say. Even changes. yesterday, I emailed you all like three, four emails. Yeah. And of the four, I think three came from the state. Mm -hmm. And so they're constantly making changes. And so as they're constantly making changes, and we have to make changes as we do what we do. Um, and such will be the case when we talk about payroll when we um, provide the update. Yeah. Thank you. So the next is um, the resolution. And this was a resolution that was sent by the North Carolina School Board Association. So attached is a resolution prepared by the legal department of the North Carolina School Board Association for the board's consideration. The resolution grants emergency powers to the superintendent to address the expanding novel coronavirus crisis. Executive Director of the North Carolina School Board Association, as Dunlap strongly urged all board members in North Carolina after consultation with their board attorney, to adopt this resolution or a similar resolution giving the needed authority to the superintendent. As we work through the crisis, the superintendent needs the flexibility to act quickly to protect and provide the student and staff safely, uh, safety. And Dr. Dunbat believes that this resolution will help the superintendent to do the job that you want her to do. And so Dr. Young recommends the board adopt the resolution. So let's read the resolution. And it's posted up. Can you read it aloud? Oh, I didn't realize when you said that. I didn't realize you wanted me to. That's not a problem. Um, resolution to, and I think, my, did my, is my mic still on? I think it went off. I think my mic went off. Mr. Carter, our mic. But I can still read it. Resolution to grant emergency powers to the superintendent. Whereas on March 14, 2020, Governor Roy uh, Cooper declared a state of emergency and the closure of all North Carolina, thank you, public schools for instructional purposes through March 30th as a safeguard against the further spread of COVID-19 and on March 23rd, extended the closure um, of all North Carolina public schools for instructional purposes through May 15, 2020 until schools reopened. And whereas under General Statute 115, 
Uh, C, that's 36, it went out again. Push it, push the bottom of it. Just push it in. Uh, okay, I'll just speak louder. The local school boards has general control and supervision of all matters pertaining to the public schools. Whereas under General Statute 115.47, the local school board of education has the authority to prescribe the duties of the superintendent subject to 115C to 76A. And whereas the board of education finds that the current state of emergency requires that the superintendent be granted greater flexibility to respond quickly and appropriately to evolving crisis. And whereas under board policy 2450, the operation of any section or sections of board policy not established by law or contract may be suspended temporarily by the majority vote of board members present at a board meeting held in compliance with law and board policy. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Warren County Board of Education grants to the superintendent the following temporary powers to address COVID-19 emergency. Authorities that temporarily waive such board policies or provision of board policies as the superintendent shall deem necessary to comply with guidance from appropriate health or governmental authority or necessary for other effective response. Authorities to take any lawful actions necessary to ensure the continuation of public education, to provide for the health and safety of students and employees, thank you, or to respond to the direction from appropriate health and government authorities, such as may include but not limited to adjustments to the curriculum and the provision of alternative education program options, adjustments to employee work schedules and assignments, modifications to the school calendar, adjustments to delivery of school provided meals, limitations on access to property owned or controlled by the Board of Education, uh, applying to any government body for financial or, uh, or other aid that may be available, applying to any other government body for waiver regulations or requirements, compliance with which is affected by the COVID-19 emergency. Authority to enter into contracts without board approval for any amount necessary for the purchase of materials, equipment, supplies, or services, or sanitary cleaning technology, or other needs directly related to COVID-19 emergency situation, provided such action is consistent with all applicable state and federal laws. <coughs> now, be it further resolved that the superintendent is directed to keep the Board of Education informed of any actions taken under this emergency authority, as soon as it is practic is a practic practicable, practicable in light of circumstances. Now be it further resolved that the temporary powers authorized by the resolution are in effect or in effect for the duration identified in governor, governor's order of March 14, 2020, and any subsequent extension of that order unless otherwise rescinded or extended by the board upon a two-thirds majority vote. Now be it therefore resolved that the execution of this resolution is conclusive evidence of the board approval of this action and of the authority granted herein. The resolution was duly adopted by the Warren County Board of Education, March 24, 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so <clears throat> I don't have any. Because I think um, we've been doing a good job with communication. So as long as the communication stays the same with the updates that you continue to keep us updated, I don't have a problem with this resolution. So, so we're going to go more Yeah, we're going to have to uh, vote. We're going to have to do a vote. So, Madam Chair, I offer a motion that we adopt the resolution granting emergency powers to Superintendent 3-18-20 as read. Okay. Motion has been made and properly second that we adopt the resolution sent by the North Carolina School Board Association. Okay. Any vote, please? Thank you. So, the reason why I put this up here was because the, I wasn't sure what the board's direction was going to be in relation to the resolution. So as a part of the resolution, it gave the superintendent the ability to be able to adopt a temporary telework agreement 
And what I did not want to do was be presumptuous and assume that you were going to adopt it. So this was the attempt to receive approval from the board to be able to do it. So I can officially submit this to the board and keep it on the agenda or say that this is something that would come under what you all just approved. I'm open to either one. So we want to go over the teleworking agreement and see what yes. it is that you have because I had a couple of questions. Okay. And so basically, this is the DPI's temporary telework. So what DPI did was they created a guideline for how they're doing their telework in DPI. And they make a recommendation. It's not like something that we have to do as a recommendation. Yes. Right. And basically, um, <clears throat> what the goal was was to take what DPI has done. And where it says DPI, it would then just be more accountable. They created the template for us. And the template basically speaks to the fact that this is a temporary telework agreement. This is not a standard protocol or operating procedure where employees are allowed to work from home, but it is temporary. And it's based on, um, you know, the goal was to practice social distances and avoid viral transmission. So it's all in relation to the COVID-19. Um, whereas you would have an agreement between the employee and then in addition, the employee would then um, have a space where we would then, ours, but we would have a space where the employee would then list their duties and responsibilities. Now, one thing that I want to go back just to clarify, when we look at Warren County, according to DPI, all full-time employees, well, according to DPI, all employees must work if they're going to get paid. But specifically, as it relates to our full-time employees, 10 months, 11 months, and 12 months, they must work. And this would be something where we would have to look in relation to the person's duties and job responsibilities, the person's ability to be able to work with student or employee information or their inability, and then also um, what type of workload would they be able to do. So this is not something where people are home. We have to have documentation. And so what Dr. Whitaker's in the process of doing is, is creating a formal, um, contract that would be a, a, a resemblance of this and then within that they would have to list all of their duties and tasks of what they would be doing and then there would be a formal process where there would be a weekly documentation because our goal is when it all comes back to DPI we want to be able to substantiate to say that every one of these employees they were working and that's how they got paid because DPI is saying if you do not work you do not get paid and one thing that I point out is DPI, although um, different school districts are doing different things. And I was saying earlier, it's a it's a it's a plane that's being built in the air. DPI has backdated this to the date that we closed. Okay. So DPI is saying that March 16th and moving forward, that although we are now we paid employees, they're saying that. It retros back and they just made that decision well after we had already made our conversation two weeks yes the DPI was saying that but we have work that we can substantiate because our teachers were here right Monday Tuesday Wednesday right. they've been calling our parents so that's not an issue right but what but that's an example of the car had already left you know we already right. left the gate right and then they come back a week later and then their changes are made. So there's some things that we know that because we've said two weeks, but then after that, which is where the next conversation is, then what happens after that? Because we know what DPI has, has already stated. And so but then what this does is it gives the option for telework. They can have the option to telework, so it's not required. If they still want to come to work, they can. They can, unless you're a teacher or a teacher assistant. You guys are not, they can't. Because teachers and teacher assistants will come back into the building and the building is already been cleaned. And so then you would have to have to do deep cleaning all over again. Okay. So you have the teachers and teacher assistants. We also have, um, so that's the 10 months. The 11 months we have assistant principals. Assistant principals, instructional coaches, they would pretty much follow the program of what the 12 months is. So with that, they have the option to telework, Okay, one option is to work from a work site, and we're looking at central office in Hawkins because we're talking about limited staff. 
or they can take leave, or they can use their comp time. Now within this, um, we're looking at the recommendation is the superintendent's recommending that all eligible full-time. When I say eligible, I'm saying eligible because if you work with student and employee information, which is under PII, which is personable, identifiable information, you cannot work at home with that information because many times in some industries, when they've taken that work home and say your laptop was lost or stolen, people's personal information was on the laptop. So we're saying if you're working with personable, personal, identifiable information, you have to work on site. So for instance, payroll has to work on site. Human resources, they have to work on site. Um, our EC students, when you talk about certain things, like they have to work on site. Um, and so there's some offices where you just have to work on site because of the access to information that you have. So that's a given. Now there's some positions that you would have to work on site because you're not able to work at home. And those positions would be similar to like child and nutrition, although they're part time, they can't do their job perform their duties at home. Maintenance and operation, custodians, they can't perform their duties at home. And so those would be people that would be eligible to telework because maintenance and operation, they have to fix things yeah. that are going site. And so that's pretty much how this telework would go. It would be based upon the duties, responsibilities, and the tasks of the employee along with the personal identifiable information, and then also their ability to be able to do the job at home. If you're not able to do it at home, that means you have to come to work. Anybody have any questions? Um, so are there, are there positions, oh, okay, let me say this. I had a thought, I don't know if this would work or not, but uh, in order for the staff to get paid, they have to be working. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, do we take this time to cross train? So, one of the things that the team has already talked about this morning is we do have opportunities for people. So, for instance, we have like our school secretary that have to do something. We also have certain conditions that just have to do something, but they're not taking phone calls because no one is calling into the school. And so one of the things that we've talked about is creating a schedule where perhaps two or three days a week they come to work, we find work for them to do, that the work that, of course, goes along with the user responsibility, and then looking at the other two days where we have safe school videos, and safe school videos are those videos that talk about the mandated reporting videos, one of the focus for the district that I said already that I wanted to focus on was customer service. And so I'm in the process of looking to secure professional development along the line of customer service, team building, putting that together. And then once I've put together those packages, then roll that out so that they don't necessarily have to come to work every day. We can say maybe three days a week that they would um, come to work. And then the other two days, they would work on professional development. And that means that they would go online, they would be video, they would have a certificate that demonstrates that they did actually do the work and or some type of learning journal. But a part of it is to at least try to accommodate that as well um, with them. But the goal is to focus on professional development as well, um, not just for them, but for the entire district. And so we're looking at all of that for professional development. Yeah, yeah, because this would be the perfect time, I agree, because of the pandemic uh, crisis that we can really accomplish a lot, uh, even though we're not actually functioning, you know, in the space of the Yes, ma'am. And that is on the plan for professional development. So uh, do we have, and I know you guys are working on it, but do we have specifically, I'll just use, let's just use Debbie's position for an example. Is somebody mod modeling or is she being, somebody's training what she does? Because, you know, Debbie does a lot, but are we, do we have somebody that knows some of the things or can be trained to do some of the stuff that Debbie does? So I will say I can't answer that right now only because she does a lot. And although many of the other administrative assistants, so let me back up and say this, Buffalo is her backup. So, so she Buffalo have a backup. has been trained. So in the event that Ms. Cox is not able, Ms. Buffalo is, but not minimizing Ms. Buffalo, Ms. Buffalo still doesn't 
no A to Z exactly. concerning right. how, but this but would be he is a backup. But this would be an opportunity for Ms. Buffalo or whomever you deem you know, necessary to know yes. A to Z. Yes. And, and that way we won't be in a situation where we don't have somebody that can do all the things yes. that Debbie does. Yes. Okay. Can you help me understand, and maybe um, our attorney needs to help us, if, if we require these people to come to be on site, let's say three of the five days, right? And then <laughs> two days they might get staff development, but to get paid they're going to have to work, and yet there's a state mandate that says there's anything that's not essential you require to shelter in place. How does that work? Good so, question. From, from that regard, I mean, I, I don't know what the government is going to come out with between now and then, whether it be from DPI, sexual education, or whatever. Um, with the governor closing schools, with if there's a shelter in place order, those orders so far, I feel like they don't address everything they need to, or they're too generalized. That's true. Because I have no idea whether I can be up or not. Right. If I'm an essential social service, you know, whether we're doing criminal work or real estate closings right. or whatever. So I think it's generalized. But you all have the mandate from the governor that schools are closed until May 1st. So if there's a shelter in place order, arguably, I would say that you probably can't have anybody on site doing anything. You can't or can't? Cannot. Yeah. But I would be relying on the power that be. Yeah, that, that are giving us updates every two or three hours or right. okay. Yeah. But yeah. I'm trying to care for it. And it's it is I like you said every other hour updates are coming. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Any other questions? I'm fine with the uh okay. so um so officially you wanna yeah, so can, can we have a motion to accept this uh, adopt, I'm sorry, temporary work, tail work agreement? Madam Chair, I make a motion to uh, to adopt this temporary tail work agreement. I second that motion. Motion has been made and properly second that we adopt a temporary tail work agreement for eligible employees. May we vote, please? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, it just came out, but I think there may be a little bit. Um, so I'm going to read what's on the screen. Oh, I think I'm going to be able to pick up. Just keep me out. So, originally, as a district, um, the goal was to at least meet the angst of employees because when school closed, because of the different pay cycles, people wouldn't have gotten paid. So as a result, the district for the past last week and this week are paying employees. When the state came out, the state is now saying, unless people work, Okay. They will not get paid. <coughs> that was after the decision to pay the employees was made. So to honor that, employees from last week and this week are getting paid. Specifically, employees on this list because they've not been working. The other employees, such as teachers, those some of you that are teleworking, you know, they are working. Right. And they're getting paid, and we have information that we will be able to provide support if the state ever came in. So what the state is saying is, and let me back up. So the the board will discuss whether the school district will pay part-time people, and these are the people: tutors, bus monitors, drivers, child food and nutrition. Currently, for the past two weeks, which includes last week and this week, this is the <laughs> payroll amount that the district will pay for these employees who are part-time that did not work. Now, I'm going to back up and say, child food and nutrition, they work. They did work. Right? And so child food and nutrition will come out. But I wanted to at least show you the numbers of the amount that was paid to everyone. 
but childhood nutrition are a part of this group because in the event the state closes this down, childhood and nutrition will not be eligible for payment if that were to happen. Because they're working. So because they're working, they're getting paid. But if they were not. But if they were not, no ma'am, they wouldn't. Right. So the board will make a decision whether part-time employees will continue. So what the state has stated was all part-time employees, they're eligible for two things. One, the state is saying that they're recommending that they seek unemployment. In addition, the state is also recommending that there is a Families First Coronavirus Response Act, which is HR 6201. I'll say it again. It's a Family First Corona Response Act, HR 6201. And it allows for employees to be able to apply to receive additional funds. You may or may not have seen this, but what it entails is, based on a part-time employee, they can get up to $511 a day or the average hours worked for a typical two weeks. Part-time employees with self-related COVID issues can get up to, um, it's saying, up to $200 per day. Um, and two-thirds of the average number of hours that they would have worked. What the state is saying is, is that between the Family First Coronavirus Act, which allows people who are impacted by the coronavirus, they can apply for that, or they can apply for unemployment. And applying for that will allow them to be able to still get the income that they would have gotten. But the school district, what they're saying is, will not be able, the school district could if you wanted to, but the state is not going to reimburse us for the money if the school district decides to pay them. So I, I use one example of tutoring, tutors. Um, there's no reason for us to utilize tutors at this particular time because we have teachers that are in place mm -hmm. that are, we're going to pay anyway, and they're, mm -hmm. they're in contact daily or at least weekly with their kids. Yes. Right? So tutors would not be an issue. Bus monitors, could possibly bus monitors and bus drivers, could they be working? Yes or no? Currently, no. Okay, but could we find something for them to do? For an example, I, I would say bus monitors and bus drivers, like you group them together because I guess they go one and the same. Um, they could not work in the cafeterias with getting those bags and lunch and stuff fixed. So what I would need to do is I need to talk to Mr. Harris. So like I'll give you an example. One of the things that we discussed in our meeting this morning was trying to figure out how we could use the employees that are 12 months, like some of the secretaries and, you know, people who, when schools are closed, they're home right now, but we have to bring them back. And so when we started talking, we were saying that they could help with distribution of food at the site, those employees. But the comment that was made was because they have to be certified, they can't be in the kitchen because they have to have the Childhood and nutrition certifications. They can help. They can help <coughs> stay on the curb and pack out food, but that's the limitation of those that we currently have that have to come back to work at a full time because we have to find work for them. And so between the schools, we have um, we have a number of people that we're going to have to find work for them to do. And that was something that we talked about. They can help with the food distribution. But the question is, we have 37 buses. And so the question would just be, and then I don't know how many bus monitors we have, but I would say the question is, um, I'm not saying it's not possible, but it would be a huge task to be able to find work for people um, to come in to do, to, um, to fulfill some level of responsibility. It would, be, it would be huge in order for them to get paid. And once again, this is the, so the pleasure of the board. Right. So let me ask a question. Um, moving forward, after these, this week here, I know we, we decided as a board that we would pay these people that the last two weeks of the, um, these last two weeks anyway. But moving forward, we know we hear the recommendation of um, DPI, but as a board, we have to decide whether or not these folks, I already think tutoring, we talked about that a little bit, and we know tutors are not needed. However, our thought process is, is if these folks could be working, what could they be possibly doing? 
Uh, are we going to have other sites up and running outside of what we have with the three schools? So currently, our goal originally was to expand. We were looking at the local fire department. Of the five, two responded. So then we said, okay, let's wait. Then we met with the pastor. So we had a meeting between 10 to 14 pastors to come. Two have signed up. Um, so I, 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 I turned into, what's the name, two, three churches automatically. So on the day, it must have been, was it on that same day? Same one, well, maybe the day before. Okay, because he said two went online and filled out the form right. that he had. So I saw so half a day, not tournament, but he said two went online and actually filled out the form. And then we had follow up opponents. So we actually had, and then we were looking at South Moore to open up. That was all the plan of trying to expand to go from three sites to maybe six to seven. And then the order was made last week for Mr. Harris, and on yesterday, Cisco did not provide us with the order that he submitted last week. And so that would have been an update that I would have provided to the board. And yesterday, when the trucks came in, the trucks are coming with what we had put in last week as our order. And so because of that, we can't expand the site because we don't have the proper um, grab and go. There's a proper you know thing that we need to be able to expand. So the goal was. <laughs> We don't, the goal was to expand, but the expanding was based upon the, the supplies of the trucks. And so when the trucks came in, the final information of the of what they sent, what we ordered is not what they sent. And that happened yesterday? Yes, ma'am. All right, so what are we doing to get, we talked to you guys about um, outs, you know, going outside of Cisco, going somewhere else to get products. Yes. Yeah, we looked at that. And we had, so one of the things that I provided in the update was we had the, I can go in and look real quick. One of the things that I had listed was we had, um, we reached out and we asked, and I'll go and look real quick. Hopefully it won't take too long. International Paper, they donated boxes of bags, and that was on the March 19th update, and then also Food Line donated boxes and bags. And so part of it is we are receiving, but if on average we're giving out um, over 2,000 meals a day, we're needing much more than a couple hundred here and a couple, although it does help, and I'm not minimizing, I'm very grateful for what we've been receiving. But uh, for example, last week we distributed over 7,000 meals, 7,669 meals. And so we, they were all into gold containers. And so all school districts in the United States are looking for the same thing, the gold containers. And so part of it is we're limited, but we didn't want to do is expand to those sites and people expect us to have it, then to turn around and not have um, the need to be able to continue offering the service. So, so, I'm sorry. Can we possibly, I mean, I, I know that people go to, I know we don't have, I know we, we receive Cisco as our, I guess, our uh, distributor that we use. But we talked about the Sam's Club, BP, uh, uh, what is it? Wow. BJ's. Have we looked at those places? Uh, and just so I'm not going to say all of the places that we looked, but I will say that Mr. Harris has done due diligence in seeking to get as many things as possible. So from those places, what I want to know is, from those places, have we made orders to them? So I can say said, that. Okay, so we need to follow up. So I don't have a problem. And we need to get those supplies because I know that they're there. Uh, I, I, I couldn't get anything in this little community here, but when I go right up the street to, you know, to Wake Forest and Raleigh, there's a multiple supplies. So we'll follow up to see what services that we can, um, yeah. what other resources we have. Yeah. But I would say our local, we have been getting, locally, we've been getting, um, like I said, from the international paper and food, from food line. So they've been providing us a bag that's um, to go. I think that's nice. I have a question. So basically, uh, we are giving out more food than we normally would have been given out if schools were open? No, ma'am. Okay. So last week we gave out almost 7,700 lunches and, and, um, and breakfasts. But normally, with about almost 2,000 students times five, we normally would do about 10,000. Okay. But those would be in the trays. And they would, so the biggest issue is there are some gold carryouts. And the issue is because it's in demand, the issue is being able to secure it 
And so what we didn't want to do is, although preliminary, what I provided to the board was the goal was expansion, but it was expansion only based on the ability to get the grab and go. So while we secured the hollow of the pony and we secured the churches, they're waiting on us, but we don't want to start something that we're not going to be able to, for us, the goal was to start today. That was the update that I provided to you on Friday. But when the truck came in, we didn't publicize that because we wanted to make sure that before we publicized it, that we had everything in place. What we need are the supplies. So we have the food, we just don't have the to-go trays. Yes, ma'am. All right, so you're going to work on getting it. Yeah, so I'll work with Mr. Harris to see what we can do to secure. The other question is um, the space for the food, the storage area. For the food. Um, so, uh, Mr. Harris, he orders food for every week. Yes, ma'am. Okay. On Fridays. So, so he doesn't have uh, additional food in storage. Well, no, he probably does have additional food in storage. Uh, he's not out of everything. No, ma'am. Okay. So, so the food is not the issue. It's the to go trays. It's the to go trays that are the issue. So, for instance, last week he was able to, um, because the week before he ordered hot food, and so that's what we served last week. So, last week we were able to order what we can make sandwiches. So, we were able to allow the food to last longer because we have sandwiches. So, it's not about the food, it's about the containers that is high demand. And I go back to across the United States. So, but we will look to see, like I said, what other yeah, places. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, I can get it. So, Victoria, do you have any comments about what we need to do as far as your thoughts, as far as, far as the employees? Linda, do you have anything? So, I guess, do you guys, so we have to make a decision whether or not we um, have these guys, which are, I think we counsel out the two, because you've got teachers to do that. The bus monitors and the bus drivers. <clears throat> we know that the child nutrition workers are still working. So they will work according to what Dr. Young said. They will continue to get paid as long as they work. Now, if they, if let's just say, I put that down. Mm -hmm. Let's just say uh, the governor says that there's a shutdown and we can't do anything or whatever. That means we can't provide food. Yes. Then that means then the bus will they, then will the uh, employees be paid? No, well, right? The board says. So with the board, so the board will then be making a decision whether. So it's a twofold. Any employee that does not work does not get paid. Right. That's really what this is. And what they recommended is they recommended that they seek the resources that are available. So the question becomes: If unemployment and this COVID family aid program is available and it's a lot, and they're able to get the money, the question is for the board, I guess. Does it matter where the money comes from or that the employee gets the money? Right. So are we doing anything as a district? If you guys in HR or whatever, whomever, deem necessary, are we doing anything if we choose to say that the bus monitors, the bus drivers, and possibly if the child nutrition workers are not working anymore, are we as a district helping assist these folks with getting this? So that would be a part of the recommendation. So my recommendation to the board is that the district Notify part-time employees that due to the budget constraints, the district will not be able to issue checks after March 20th. And also, the district will support them by providing the funding resources through the state. So in addition okay. to letting them know, we will also tell them the unemployment, how to do what they need to do, and then also the COVID family aid program. So we won't just say no money. We will say this is what the decision is, and these are support resources that you can go to to ensure that you get paid. But are we helping them to do it? And the reason why I'm asking is, you have people on here that are like 60 plus old elderly people that are driving buses, that are bus monitors, that are child nutrition folk. You know as well as I know that they are like older, we have a group of older staff. Are we helping them to go through this process? So the goal was not to help the folks okay. in this process, but to provide the resources. Right. So if we were to do that, that's so, not an issue. Okay, so how can we do it? So a part of it would be having to put a process in place where we say these are computers that you can come and access to be able to go. And somebody's there to help them with the process. Yes. I mean, like, for instance, I'll give you an example. You have Ms. Mayo, who's in transportation. She's working. 
they can go there and get on the computer and um, sign up with an additional person. They could very well, but I, you know, I have gotten so many complaints about certain things that we're not doing as a district. So okay. we need to we need to look at how we can assist. If we're going to assist, we can say we're going to assist. We need to assist. If we're not, then say what well, we just provide them. It's being provided on the news at the Family First Aid Program along with unemployment. But you see as well as I see, and we all see that an unemployment line are like 40, we're going 40,000 people. But they're doing it online. Right. But we, I'm only talking specifically about my district is what I'm concerned with. And so what I'm saying is, is because they're doing it online, we have people that do not or not are not computer savvy to be able to access and get their money. And so we, this is roughly about 45 people. I have a problem setting up a process in place where we can help them go online. We're not talking about 100 people. We're talking about 45 people where we can say to them, if you need assistance, these are the hours, come in, let's get on the computer, bring your personal information, and you go on and we can share your <laughs> That's not a problem. We can do that. Well, would you ask a quick question? I'm going to be perfectly honest. The COVID-19 family aid program. Exactly. Nobody knows what that I is. I don't know what that and is. I'm and sure how salient is it? Like, right. what is that? Is Nobody it, would know. I, I read up on How it. easy yeah. is it to access? And is so it, that would be something that we can provide. And we don't know what the money. So there's a listing. And so what I'll do is there's a listing that's a link. And it's a Family First Coronavirus at HR 6201. From this website, what would happen is we would then, if the employees need assistance, then we would show them how to go on. Right, that's them. now because we just asked for it. But mm -hmm. before, the recommendation was only that the superintendent recommends that the district notify part-time employees that are due to the to the budget constraints and that you guys would share with them that as of the 27th, mm -hmm. they would no longer be you know, receiving their pay. And the district will support Mm -hmm. them by providing funding resources through the state. But there's nothing here specifically to say outside of me just asking for it. Mm -hmm. And what I, my concern is, is we want to make sure, here's what I don't want to have to deal with, that when we get up and running again, we don't have bus drivers because they're going somewhere else and working. We already have a, a, a shortage of bus drivers. Secondly, we don't have bus monitors and we have to have bus monitors for our disability kids. We don't want those people to go to another district and work because they say that we as a district haven't taken care of them in this time of emergency, is what I'm saying. I understand. So that's my only qualm. If, if, if we didn't have those issues, I would say, you know what, that, that we can push them to these resources because that would be the ideal thing to do. And we as a district not be responsible for paying those folks. However, we don't want to be in a position where when we get ready to go back to normal, to the normal, that we don't have these, we don't have bus drivers, we don't have bus monitors, we don't have child nutrition folks, because they feel like we are not taking care of them. So we don't have a problem setting up um, stations to support them. Let me ask you this question. <laughs> um, my understanding that it's only going to, unemployment is only going to be 12 weeks. I think it has to set it to 26. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't tell you about the unemployment. Okay. Well, I think it's 12 weeks. And um, based on that, let's say we went the route of the unemployment mm -hmm. and the uh, over, over family family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could we pick up from there, you know, after the 12 weeks or whatever is in place at that particular so time? So that time, the school would then be closed. So we're talking. We're really talking April and oh, May. Yeah, that's true. So really April and May and part of June, depending on the schools that would have had it. So the unemployment so does do that before. Before. I'm so sorry, could we could we pay them before they went into the unemployment mode? And then pick up that and then they pick, yeah. we pick it up. We could, but what she's saying is is that she's recommending, if I hear you correctly, yes. that we utilize the services that are being provided through the state, right. which is um, through the Family First Program and the unemployment. Right. What you're saying is, is um, in the months to come, if for whatever reason the 12 weeks run out, that's what I think I hear you saying, yeah. could we as a district pick up 
from there and pay you for it. Well, Dr. Young just said that the food, they would be out of school. Yes, ma'am. The so, 12 weeks would be the next three months, and we would be out of school by then. So then unemployment would carry for the rest of the, the school year. So is there anything that we could do before they apply for unemployment? I mean, in order to keep money, more money, more money coming in for the, for the employee. Yeah, for the employee. I guess for me, my challenge is that right now we're on a budget freeze, okay. and so we just had to pay. And I'm not trying to be insensitive. The only thing I'm saying is, yeah, is we paid fifty-one thousand dollars in a budget that's a freeze right now for two weeks. And at this point, if we continue, that's over a hundred thousand dollars for the next month, which will be over three hundred thousand dollars for the next three months. And so for me, my question then becomes, do we have $300,000 to be able to pay? It's not that you don't want to, but the question is, do we have the money? And I would say that the state is saying they're not going to give us that money. And so with $300,000 in payroll, like I'll give you an example, Cobb County in Georgia, they went into their fund balance and they just spent $3.2 million and said we're paying all employees in the district. We don't have a fund balance to go in and say we can get $300,000. So then this is where the conversation becomes. It's not that you don't want to, it's is it feasible for you to do it? But the other question comes, the other question that I have is, if these folks, like bus monitors and bus drivers, if we find something for them to do, if they were, if this was a normal, if this was a normal working environment and it was not where we are now, then we would be paying them because they would be working. Yes. So what I'm asking you is, and you said it would it would take too much time to do it or whatever, but could we find things for the bus monitors, bus drivers, and I think the child nutrition is working child now. Child nutrition is working, and so for me, the thing is, I would have to go back and look to see. And the only reason I'm saying it is because I don't want to make work up for people just to pay them. Because if schools are closed, the only thing that's open right now are just central office. So then the question will be, where can Central Office put 45 people to make to have them do work? That would substantially. I thought the schools were open. The schools are closed, so all the schools. No, are, I thought the schools were open according to they have to put the food somewhere. So, so that means the, the high school is open, North Side is open. Only cooking. the kitchen. I, that's what I'm saying, Dr. Okay. I'm very much aware that it has to be only the kitchen. Okay. But what I'm asking is, is could we find something for them to do? At this point, I would have to go back and look to see. I don't want to say yes and I don't want to say no, but I would say we would have to find work for 40 people to do work outside the scope. They were hired to drive a bus. The question is, would we be able to have them to do work outside of the scope of what they were hired to do? And then if so, what would that work be? Well, we could. Do you, do you, would, would you want to look at having um, the bus drivers transport these meals? So the question it just goes back to again, if we have people that are coming and picking up the food already. No, but what I'm saying to you is there is there could be something that we could have them to do if we had them to transport these meals. I thought we had a plan that you know we wouldn't use you know we wouldn't use the buses right now. We didn't have to, but that doesn't mean that we don't change the plan. That's a possibility of an option. The goal was to just keep it at the three sites. Right. Like I said, whatever the pleasure of the board, then we just move forward. For me, my biggest thing is we don't have the money. And a part of it is in saying that the state is not going to refund us, reimburse us for this money. But I think I think what you're saying, I think if I hear you correctly, we don't have the money if they're not working. If they're working, we have the money. No, we don't have the money, period. That's what that's the that's really the point. We don't, so the state, whether these people work or not, other than child food and nutrition, because it's a federal, the federal that they pay out of, child food and nutrition will get paid because they're working for child food and nutrition and the funds come from child food and nutrition. All of these other employees, if they work and the district elects to pay them, the district will have to pay them from local funds. The state has said, they are not reimbursing us for anything. So even if we find work for them to do, they come in and they work, okay. and we pay them, the state is not going to reimburse us because they've said we're not paying. 
because there is no need for any of these people to work. And because there's no need for them to work, we have to substantiate that they, they, they're not going to reimburse us. Mm -hmm. So that's the big so That's all I'm saying. Like Cobb County, they took money out of their local funds and their fund balance to be able to pay for these people's salaries. But I guess my point is, if we opt as a district to say to keep these folks working, we utilize the bus drivers to transport food, then that would be a need for them. Because other districts are doing it, right? The state is saying that they're not reimbursing. They're still not reimbursing. They're not really seeing that school because schools are essential. So they're not, I mean, that's what I'm seeing. That they're not, what I'm sorry? Well, they're not moving students to school. They're not using the buses to move students to schools because schools are in session. So that's what they would be reimbursed for. So we're. Right, but I see other districts transporting meals. So help me with that. I, only thing I can say is they have the funds. Yeah, that's the only thing I can say. I can't. I, I'm not trying to be funny. I can't speak on. The only thing I can say is they they have the funds. Well, I think we're between the rock and the hard place in the pandemic because we don't have any. You know, we don't have that fund balance. We don't have that money for a rainy day, which is why you don't let it get to the point where, unfortunately, which is why we should be in this predicament now. But we are. It's nothing. To do with you, or right? yeah. No. So, so what you, what you, to your point, when you said we were direct into the family aid or COVID nineteen family aid, I think as long as we help facilitate, and we can help, so we can add that. We can help, help facilitate. So if you can, if you can get actively engaged in helping okay, them right. find these alternate resources until we're in a pandemic, you know, until things change. Um, you know, desperate times. So, if you can give us a plan about the young as to where we're going to set, you know, you know, have some type of uh, office hours where you can have somebody that is going to help them no, work that's not through this process. We, I mean, similar to like when you come in and you can apply for, like in our right. stores, you apply for application and they have those booths where you go in and apply. Because the one thing that I would say is while we can show people, they're putting in their personal information, so it's not so much we're going to be able to show them within reason, but we can say this is a website, you know, you want to type in your name, you know, and then they will then have to walk away so that they can put their social security number but in. If they, but if I say to you, as an elderly person, I don't know how to use a computer, and I'm giving you permission to do it for me if I'm standing right there, you guys, can you do that? If that, I mean, I just don't want anyone to ever come back and say right. that but they will provide people that support. We're there to provide support, but I guess for me it's just a matter of saying in the event that that person gives that employee their social security number, I just don't want that employee to be in a situation where anything ever comes back. So can we use HR then? So we have two people in HR. Okay, well then who, who can we use that we can say that it's trustworthy to help these folks? My concern is if we're going to do this and, and push them to these, you know, to the unemployment or this family first aid program, that we provide as much support necessary and we don't to get to this them. process done for all of these employees. And we're talking 40 people. Doesn't so matter to me how many it is. Yeah. If it was five people, it would not matter to me as long as they got the support. And that's not a problem. Okay. But like I said, my biggest concern is when it comes down to the person's social security number, I don't want anyone to ever feel like their identification was compromised. I agree. Process. So then that's why I said HR. You said you only had two employees. So my question to you is, is then you can set up a work schedule where you two employees and it's in HR, work with these folks on the schedule. I'm to figure something else out because they already have their workload and time. But I'll figure it out and I'll let you know what the schedule is. Thank you. Attorney Mays, is there anything such as a floor to like cover ourselves or the no. they were signed because of privacy, you know, they're helping the personnel on the computer. I, I don't think that anybody's going to be held to any really I don't strong threshold of helping them. And I mean, in, that in this support. situation, I, I don't need to do anything you wanted to. Exactly. Get a, get a pass on it. Um, yeah. You all helping people sign up for these benefits are going above and beyond any requirement that you have um, to do so. But yeah. it certainly helps all others stand for your own folks. Yeah, I'm just saying about older people. And don't want to stand in line for exactly. a day and a half to get the benefits. So, right. so, so we'll start with getting a place for them to do that for next week. Because they get paid for the 26th, 
So we'll have something in place where they can come in next week and um, schedule time to come in and fill it out if they need it. So we'll make sure they get that communication. So let us know where, where we, who you guys are going to have it at and who you guys are doing the whole process. We'll provide the board with the plan. Yep, yeah, thank you. Why so then, add one just real quickly, if, and you might <laughs> push out that if you there are issues with using a computer to bring someone trustworthy with them, with them, because we see all the time these little seven year olds are changing money for Hispanic people and they don't put everything up in front. That's and, a good point. And just bring someone who, if, if there's any it's issue, so bring someone, a family member with you, because those young kids just don't try to do it all. Yes. We'll do that. We'll have a schedule where they'll have to sign up because we want to limit the number of people coming in as well. Yeah. So we'll do that. All right. So then I call for a motion that we vote for this pay for part time employees. Madam Chair, make a motion that we pay for part time employees. That um, that we take the recommendation of the superintendent. I'm sorry. I may have said it incorrectly. Okay. I apologize. So that we take the recommendation of the superintendent, which is to notify the part-time employees that are, you know, that we have these budget constraints, and that we will we will support them in providing um, resources um, for the unemployment and this what is it pay the COVID nineteen COVID nineteen program yeah. So anyway, we, we're going to we're going to take the recommendation of the superintendent. This for um, these part time things is at the bottom. So, this you need to restate it for the late day? Yeah. yeah. So, to the bottom. Yeah. Okay, Madam Chair, make a recommendation that the superintendent recommends that the district notify the part time employees that due to budget restraints, that the district will not be able to issue checks after March 27, 2020. For time not worked. Also, the district will support them by providing funding resources through the state. I second that already. I think we just need to add in that the district will also provide support. You know that, right? It says, so it says the district will support them. It's there. Okay. So right. it's just the additional layer of you know the, layer. the information, but it's also um, helping them one to one to sign up. Exactly. All right. So maybe both of Thank you. The information items, um, the fi financial wellness check. Yes. So yeah. this is under the board because I wasn't sure, and so I was just. I guess we'll just Did you get any questions out? No. So, do you guys have any uh, questions? I don't have questions. I mean, it's, I've been through it, and it, I think it needs discussion then at this point. So, then let me, let me, if I could, if, you know, I think it may do need discussion. However, I know you guys went over this, um, um, what, last? Our last, our last board meeting. Board. I went over the recommendations. Yeah, right. And I know we didn't go through this whole packet detail by detail. I'm asking if we could, and I don't know how you guys feel as a board, but I think we need some time to, if, if I hear what you're saying, Victoria, as far as fine to go through this document. I'm digesting it still, yeah. and then it's a lot of it. Yeah, and then there's a lot of because it's, and we were just about to, you know, kind of get excited about working on a strategic plan. This kind of came in in parallel. Yeah. And was kind of excited about giving us some real data to help us move forward with some real objective data. Um, so I think it's a, it, it's a well constructed document that I think deserves further discussion. For sure. So, would you guys like to do that now? With your questions, I'm not sure how to how you want to. I, I would prefer to wait and, and go over the document because I highlighted so much uh, on this document that I feel needs to be addressed before we. Okay. 
what about you, Victoria? Because I know you guys have some I just feel like that if everyone's right now, the pandemic and how you're dealing with what's going on is enough. It's enough. So is there a time where we could, you know, maybe do Zoom or I don't have questions. I know we have to have really have an open meeting, I would think, right? I, I'm just trying to figure out if we wanted to meet moving forward to be doing this, depending on how things get, we may not need to come here or come out, but could we possibly do something like conference call, Zoom, or that's what you can as long as your meeting is broadcast in oh. some way, I think as long as it is public, uh -huh. I think you. you satisfy the open meetings long. Okay. So like what if we, you know, all congregate here on the next meeting? You have all the chairs six feet apart, or everybody skypes in with a tower. Okay. Well, it can be done like we're doing here tonight. Yeah. Just, just, just like you know, when you skyped in, or however that was, it was a right. screen. Everybody can appear on the same screen. Mm -hmm. So, and how could we, if we were, if we were in our own homes, we could still do this, yeah. right? So, like what I've done is I've zoomed in the exact cabinet, and they're in. They're just they're in the meeting right now. So, similar to how we did that with uh, the strategic educational elements, mm -hmm. when we met with educational yeah. elements, that would be our board meeting. Well, that's one thing that I wanted to come out of this meeting because this was probably a little precarious as it stands in terms of the eye of the public um, and myself included. So, but my understanding was that in terms of votes, there it, it couldn't be tough. So you're you're saying that we we could vote as a board, corporate, and we could not be. Sure, I don't think you all have to be in the same place at the same time. The idea is that the meeting is public, that everybody has notice of it. The individual, the individual public has the opportunity to participate in the meeting in such form they have the opportunity to observe and hear what's going on and address the board. So you have to make accommodation for that in some, in some manner. Yeah, but you all, you don't have to have any software to do this. I know we all use the whatever that stuff is called today, but you can vote verbally. You can vote verbally, uh, raising your hand. And then, well, I mean, you know, if you're doing it by a telephone, you can't see, it right see your hand go up. Verbally. You can say yay or nay, and you know, those votes can be tallied, and, you know, many can, can be taken. I don't see any problem with doing it. That's good to know, Bobby, because I was yeah, thinking. I was thinking yeah, I, I was thinking I what you were saying. I said, well, I do it. All the time with my real job, like what? Is the, I think that, that some of the that the teleconference meetings aren't are somewhat frowned upon typically, but given the circumstances, right? Like I said on most things that are done during this time period, I don't think that a high level of scrutiny is going to be okay. able to do anything. But I think as long as you hit those bare necessities that you make the meeting available. The general public can give the public an opportunity to address the board for public comments. Your butts are not in your seats, but you're participating otherwise. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate the fact that we had public comments that was emailed in. And at least, you know, we got it out of early enough that they were able to share their thoughts. And, you know, so what do you guys wish your pleasure? Well, if we can do that, then I see where we can. We can, you know, deal with this at okay. another time. Yeah. So, and well, logistically, let me ask this: How you all would intend to, you know, the next meeting? Let's assume everything is just as it is, if not worse. You gonna open the room up for people to come in and listen, and whether you are here or not. Um, I mean, whether you wanted to come or not, I, and I don't know if Debbie's preference on being here. I don't really have a problem with it necessarily. As long as I don't have to touch anybody yeah, or get in anybody's face. But whether you all participate over the phone or via Skype or Zoom or whatever app is available to you and you're present physically or not, you need to have some manner of public participation that's probably not too restrictive. And that's the next thing is that if we Funnel it to some app that somebody has to sign into a computer to participate. 
something like that. I would think that you would, even if you, if you had a meeting, say at Central Office, like we used to, in the space there. Central Office open every day. Are so as of public? today, based on the information that the county sent out, we put a notice on the door that they needed to call. Um, because the county offices, they closed their, their doors to the public. They have to call the email. And that was based on the information that was sent out yesterday that I forwarded to you all. So, you know, just from the kind of the standpoint of it's easier to clean that space as opposed yeah. to this space. And I think we were got, we thought about that, Robbie, but the thing of it was, I think Debbie and some other people were saying that we needed to do this uh, virtual. Okay, we can't do that from Central Office. We could. Because of the connectivity of the Wi-Fi, that's why we were here. Because when we looked at Hawkins and we looked at the other facilities, right. they they don't have the Wi-Fi connection that this building has. Like right. the schools have it, but the offices don't. Because the funding was sent to the schools to increase the Wi-Fi. So if we have it at Central, <laughs> the issue could potentially be how many people can log on. Like our management team that we had on Monday when you left, right. it was hard with 25 people getting on at Central Office. And so right. we reached 51 people. The question becomes to have a meeting and not have access to all the people to get on versus being Zoomed and everyone is able to get on. Or YouTube or whatever that right. process is. But so I've been looking. We've had 51 people that have been able to be accessible and we could all be a part of that 51 um, moving forward. Can you tell us how many people? Are yes, ma'am. That's what it is. Oh, 49 or 51. Yeah. Which is good, I think. That's more it's people great. than we have in our I think it's, it's, like, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's the right new ways of doing things. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so this is the best place for it from your and perspective. It's going to be the best place for us because we yeah. Points I, agree. Right here. But, uh, I agree. I will say that just the comments that I'm getting from people that are attending, they're giving me suggestions on sound and that type of thing. But overall, the sound and, the, and everything's been really good. Okay. We need to do some tweaking, obviously, but I think it's been over and moving. Okay, great. So then, I, is that okay, Robbie? You think you guys that we can do this? I know it's a bigger space. But we only where you guys have it is, is totally up to you, but I think you need to have some public space that people can come, come and participate in. in the meeting because right. it only takes one person that's left out. So that's right. I agree. Cause an issue, so. I have yeah. a comment though, because when the message was put out, it was put out that public comments would be done through, through a certain forum. And so we did have two public comments that were made today. So I guess the question is, could we continue with those public comments and still they can call it in, they can email or submit it. So that did occur just for clarification today. So that could happen on Zoom or YouTube when they submit it, the information is presented to Ms. Tyler Green who reads it, which she did today. Do you all typically have a lot of public participation in work sessions? No. This is the first work session. No. Not typically. Okay. Not typically. I, that's why I'm excited about the uh, 51 people right. instead of participating. I think it's great compared to because we don't get a lot of people come in. Now, you know, board meetings is a little bit different. Yeah. But work session is not. All right. So, what should we table the financial wellness check? And then we're asking Dr. Young to maybe kind of find another time where all of this is. That's fine. And yeah. the other recommendation is this could be used in the strategic plan conversation. So when we begin the strategic plan conversation, we can bring this up because we're going to have to talk. Because I thought we were saying we were going to use this right. as a part of it. That's right. This was going to be one of our documentation it was. that we use. So we could do a twofer and wait until that process occurs and, and review this then. Okay. You want to get something different? Well, I mean, it all depends on, I guess. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, um, so what are your thoughts? I guess we have to take one day at a time. You know, if it gets worse, it gets worse. If it doesn't, you know, then you want to deal with that. Yeah. Okay. So then, I guess. Um, just let me know. Yeah, we'll just let you know. Okay. I'll let you know what I know. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So we'll table it if this is okay. We have to have a motion to table it. It's just, just in vote. It's just okay. information. It's not action. No, ma'am. Oh, it's, it's not. Just, it's just in vote. Exactly and and right. we still have time. Yeah. 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 So we're good. All right. Any, anything else? Yes. In, in reference to the public comment, I apologize for saying something. In the public right. comment, so and I can it's my understanding that when school is closed, all school activities are closed as well. If that's the Absolutely. case, then don't we, do we need to push that out so we don't get those kinds of concerns and questions? I mean, like that has been put on our it's social on the media. Side. Um, and, and then also, the wrong. and then addition to our no, social media, so we've said as long as school remains closed, all events, activities. activities, and then in addition, all parents receive that by way of robocall. Call. Robo call. And so, um, a part of it is just if we have all active information, then that parent should have gotten it if our information we have the system is correct. And I think what we maybe want to do to respond to those questions is maybe we'll do another robocall. From you or not a problem, you know, and then talk about the problem not being held because we're not in session, right? Um, so until until we know from the notice, and the goal is not to not have activities, no. but to say we can't make any hard stone, right? Until we find out because the, the governor may come back and say we're closed now. I mean, once Virginia just said they're closed until August, the rest, rest of the year, and so. But we're closing until May 15th, and the problem would be prior to May 15th. Yes, ma'am. And people, I know what a huge deal it is. Yes. How much money people spend. Yes, ma'am. So I don't want to invite an address or thinking there's a problem, because clearly it's not clear to right. everyone because we haven't. It's, 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 exactly. it's not a problem following through. Yeah. yeah. All right, I call. Can I call the motion to adjourn? If you guys can. Madam Chair, I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion has been made and properly second. May we adjourn the meeting? May we vote, please? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bobby, I appreciate you. I wanted to really talk, and I think you helped us out with this case stuff. And, you know,